Hello, my friend. Welcome to live chat. I am very excited about today's live chat because I, you know, I like talking <laughs> and I like telling stories. I've always loved stories and remembering things and, and just talking about things that happened, things that were dramatic, things that were drama filled, things that were interesting. I love talking about people and talking about how people reacted to certain situations. And today we're going to have that conversation, but around eyeshadow palettes. I have stacks of eyeshadow palettes. This is a little stack of some eyeshadow palettes that I have here um, that I went into my vault, aka the, this is open still. The cabinets that are back here are filled with eyeshadow palettes that I've been collecting over the past 10 years. Uh, and so we have some great stories, y'all. We have some great stories about eyeshadow palettes. And it's not just about the makeup. That's the thing. Is it people like, ah, it's just makeup. It's literally not just makeup because there's so much that went into the launch of these, into what happened after they launched, into people's reactions, into how these products changed the way we look at makeup now. And I thought it would be fun to just kind of go back and and look and see from a, a current 2024 perspective on, on what happened on the stories behind the eyeshadow palette. So we're gonna do that today, but we're gonna do it live. And I think this is important to do live because I do not, notoriously do not have the best memory ever. <laughs> And I will remember the things that resonated with me, but I won't remember other details. And I know that the community here will. The people that are here alive in the collective brain of makeup awesomeness, you should be seeing them over here on your screen. If you are on a phone, turn it uh, horizontal and you should see them pop up and see their conversations that they're happening, I am hoping. So before we get started, I do want to quickly just say good morning or good afternoon or good evening, whatever time zone my friends are in, and just say hello and thank you for being here to the people that are here live. So Roya, good morning to you. So good to see you. Hi, Teresa. Uh, Teresa says, hello. Welcome back to live chat. I hope you all are doing well. Winter is back in North Dakota. Oh, no. As long as you're allowed to drive, as long as it's not so bad that they just shut down the entire freaking state. <laughs> I'm sorry that it's back to being cold there. No, but I mean, that's what's natural. That's what our planet is supposed to be doing. So it kind of freaks me out when you have warm weather in the winter, Teresa. It kind of freaks me out a little bit because that's not the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> You're supposed to have cold weather. Um, thank you to Teresa and the rest of the moderators for being here. I'm sure Flory is floating around. If uh, Steph or Audra happen to make it, thank you so much for being here as well. Teresa, thank you for being here. Kim says, happy Sunday from Vegas. Finally, the rain stopped here. Uh, I wish you well in Vegas. Hopefully you don't have to deal with too much traffic, too much nonsense from the Super Bowl that is happening today. Today is the Super Bowl in Las Vegas. I'm glad the rain stopped there. Um, it, it, happy Super Bowl Sunday to those who are watching. Yay sports, go sports. <laughs> I am. Uh, I was a varsity football manager in high school, so I was super into high school sports, um, specifically football. I watched the other a lot of the other sports too, but specifically football. Very much into high school football, so I'm very familiar with football itself. But when I graduated, I realized I just didn't care about who won. <laughs> I cared about who won in high school because I knew the players. I knew some of the players and, um, you know, I wanted that for them. But I, once I graduated, it's like, I don't know these people. <laughs> and I just never got really into watching either uh, college or professional football. So, uh, but anyway, that's a long story to say that I really am not too invested in who wins today. Tish, hello. Good morning to you in South Florida. Oh. Always so jealous, always so jealous. Carrie, happy Sunday to you. And a different Carrie, good morning. Is anyone else from the US watching the Super Bowl today? We are excited at our house. Did you know I learned this from makeup research uh, that, that this is the number one chicken wing sales day? This was from the ranch uh, dressing lip balms, the Hidden Valley Ranch dressing lip balms. This is the number one chicken wing eating day in the US is the Super Bowl. I did not know that. 
Good morning, Miss Lavender. Happy Sunday to you. Good morning, Cynthia. Happy Super Bowl Sunday. Good morning, Pink Expression. Ready for another great community chat? I am so happy that you are here. Leah, good morning to you. And... Let's see, Roya says, happy Sunday from cold Orange County, California. It's 41 degrees here in the past couple of weeks. We've had so much rain. We had 60 degree weather here in Maryland yesterday, which was nuts. Usually we don't have that. Um, 41 is a nice day here usually in the winter. Um, it gets cold. Like It'll, it'll drop down um, below zero degrees uh, Fahrenheit here occasionally, but not super often. Tracy, hello. And Anna and Jilly Mac and Gabrielle, and if there's nobody, if there's somebody, oh, I know there's lots of people that I didn't say good morning to you. Good morning to you. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, just a quick little thing about my hair, because I did put up an Instagram post for once. I'm gonna, tr I'm trying, I go through these things where I'm like, I'm gonna post more on Instagram, and then I post one post and then I disappear for months. Uh, but I posted my hair yesterday. Uh, this is my natural hair. This is my natural curls. This is what happens when all I do is get out of the shower, do a little, put a little bit of a pattern, pattern beauty, like curl stuff in it and diffuse it a little bit. This is my hair. So I don't wear it like this that often because usually it looks like you see like on, on one side, it's a little flatter. On the other side, it's a little curlier. That's always dri driv driven me a little bit nuts that it's un my curl pattern is uneven. Uh, but I really felt cute yesterday. I got it. I put my hair in a towel. And I get dressed and I, you know, do a couple of things. And then I take my hair out of the towel. And I was like, my hair curly looks really cute today. I think I'm going to keep it. And I'm uh, I'm really enjoying it. I think it looks super cute. It was a lot, hell of a lot easier than what I normally do trying to straighten it. Uh, so, so yeah, so that's just the explanation for that. Um, and, yeah, there's a picture of me on Instagram from yesterday. I, I'm trying to post on Instagram. I'm trying. And then this shirt, in case you're curious, um, Phoenix asked me to take them to Target when I didn't have time to take them to Target. And uh, I got this for 18 bucks at Target. And I think that it is super cute. It's like one of those crappie ones. It's giving me flash dance vibes and I'm loving it so much. I'm loving it so much. Thank you all for the compliments on my hair. It really means a lot to me because I've been kind of self-conscious of my natural hair. I don't know. I was just I don't know. You know how that goes. You know, I don't need to explain it. Y'all know how it goes. Anyway, thank y'all. Y'all are so nice. Such sweet, sweet uh, comments. I really appreciate y'all so much. Oh, I love this. Donnelly says, currently wearing my, I'm just here for the food shirt because gold touched down home run. Yes, I love that. I love that. All right, so let's talk about some of these stories behind the eyeshadow palettes. I have a little bit of a cold, so I might be drinking my coffee a little more often during this chat. Uh, okay, so I wanted to start with Too Faced um, and the Chocolate Bar palette. Um, when Too Faced came out with the Chocolate Bar palette, I think it blew everybody's mind because of the scentedness of it. I don't think I had ever seen a scented eyeshadow palette before. Scented lip products were a thing, but I don't remember seeing a scented eyeshadow palette before, and people lost their minds over this freaking palette. And I think that it was the olfactory experience of smelling the chocolate that made people think this performed well. <laughs> Because looking back, like the looks I created with this were not good. Like looking back, really and truly. It, it still smells a little bit like chocolate, but I got to get really up on it. Really up on it. Um, I loved this palette. I also think that there were some shades in here that were a little different. Because you got to remember, too, is that, um, you know, Urban Decay was kind of the only brand that was doing eyeshadow palettes that weren't natural palettes. I mean, you could find a blue palette here or there, you know, but you weren't finding, you know, like these, like this pink, like this bright pink um, matte shade. You didn't see that quite as much. Foils were becoming really popular that were like really foildy. So I feel like, you know, this was a little bit different, believe it or not, than what we had seen before as far as the color story. Yes, there were tons of natural shades in it, but we had that pop of pink, which was a little different, you know, and the smell of it. People lost their damn minds over this palette. <laughs> lost their minds. Um, Dawn says, yes, my first premium palette. Yeah, this was my second one. My first one I actually have here as well. My first one, and there's actually a review on the channel of it, and it was the Urban Decay Naked 2 palette was my first premium palette. Um, and this changed my life. This, this palette, the Urban Decay Naked 2, in, was one of the inspirations for this 
channel because all I had used before this was like the four pan CoverGirl palettes or the little Revlon palettes, stuff like that. And it, it was not easy to use. You know, a lot of them would be, you know, you put the color on and you try to blend it and then it would blend away and you'd have to build it and blend and build it and blend. And it just never really did the thing. And when I got the Urban Decay Naked 2, which again was my first uh, expensive palette, I was like, this is actually staying on my eyes. Like I can do this. Like I can do this. I can do some makeup. Was I good at makeup at the time? Mm, questionable. <laughs> Probably I would say, I would dare to say not really, but I was just learning, you know, and the fact that it stayed on my eyes and was so much easier to use, I think prepped me for the chocolate bar palette. But in hindsight, I feel like these two palettes really weren't that great a quality, but compared to what we had had, and especially if you were like me and you'd only bought like really low quality drugstore palettes before then, or drugstore single shadows before that, these were a huge deal. They were really a big deal. Oh, Mon says, I miss those palettes. I still have mine. Let me scroll down a little bit. Oh, Pamela says, I miss those days. See, it's like, I don't, I don't know if I miss them though, because I feel like the quality, it's so much easier to find higher quality eyeshadow than it was back then. Um, you know, now you can get higher quality shadow. I mean, it depends. I know for deeper skin tone, ColourPop doesn't necessarily work all the time. So that's going to be skin, you know, dependent. But like Essence is making some really great eyeshadow palettes, Essence Cosmetics. Um, trying to think like other brands, but there's, there's, it's a lot easier to find a good quality drugstore palette. Still not the easiest, but easier than it was to find a good uh, quality drugstore eyeshadow palette. So, um, so if you were like me and that was your time frame, this was like life changing to find these eyeshadow palettes. Sarah says, my first non-Walmart eyeshadow was the ABH Modern Renaissance after watching one of Jen's reviews of Ulta's holiday sales. No way. Oh my gosh. That's so cool. What a great story. Thank you for sharing that. And Roya says, ColourPop eyeshadow doesn't stay on my eye. See, Roya says, and Roya has, according to your um, your picture, you have much lighter skin than the people that typically tell me that it doesn't stay on them. So that's interesting. So I wonder if it's not just a deeper skin medium, like a deeper medium to deeper skin tone issue. Um, very curious about that because they, they do pretty well on me. Um, I do have a lot of trouble with the transfer of the shimmers, but as far as lasting power, usually they last pretty well. So I don't know what it is. Maybe it's, it's, maybe it does not skin tone dependent. Maybe it's skin type dependent. Maybe it's oily skin versus normal skin, dry skin. And I have normal skin. So maybe that's why I'm not really sure. That's so interesting. So I wanted to lead from the Too Faced Chocolate Bar Palette into the Too Faced Sweet Peach launch. Y'all, when I tell you this was the most hyped launch of an eyeshadow palette of all time, I am not exaggerating. Like, I am not exaggerating. They had an animated commercial starring Laura Lee that was animated in the style of those old uh, Christmas cartoons like uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Um, and uh, Frosty the Snowman, the stop motion animation situation. I, think, I guess it's stop motion. I'm not sure, but you know what I'm talking about. Those old cartoons. They made a whole commercial for the Sweet Peach palette. I think it's still on um, Too Faced's YouTube channel, I believe. Um, you may just, you may have to search for Too Faced Sweet Peach Laura Lee or something like that to be able to find it. But it was really like pro, like a lot of money went into that commercial for this palette. And when I tell you that when I went on to buy this, because I was not on Too Faced PR, the line was tens of thousands of people. You know, it was when those lines were brand new online where you go to check out and it says, you're behind so-and-so number of people. You're behind 5,432 people. Please don't click away or else you'll lose your spot in line. It was tens of thousands of people. It was multiple hours hoping that by the time you, I got to the front, I was going to be able to get it. And honestly, I blocked, I blocked it out. I don't know if I got it at that time or if I got it later. I think I did get it at launch, but I can't remember. But along with the palette, they also had, you know what? 
I think that, yeah, it was for the palette because after this, they came out with a whole line of other products that were peach themed. This is the inside of it if you hadn't seen it. I don't believe this is still available. Um, and people, I think that it was still the scent of it. And, and I think a lot of people back then were Too Faced collectors which I don't think we see that as much now, like people that are brand loyal and collecting because brands didn't release things quite as often as they do now, where it's like every other week there's a new launch from the from a lot of the major companies. Um, I don't think we saw that quite as much. So this was highly anticipated. People lost their freaking minds over this palette. Uh, quality wise, was it any better than the Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette? Maybe slightly, but not by much. Um, you know, I think that it was more just the internet hype around it. You know, when you have somebody, you see somebody that's really excited about it and you see all these people talking about it, all these people excited about it, you're like, you get that FOMO and you're like, I need this. I need to have this in my life. And if I don't, then I'm going to feel regret for not getting it. It was, it was absolutely nuts. It was absolutely nuts. Oh my gosh, Mary says literally just tossed the sweet peach bronzer highlight last week. Oh my gosh. Uh, Roya says, believe it or not, I got that one from Sephora, I think about a year ago. It was either $10 or $15. Yeah, because the hype died down over it. It's like everybody that wanted it purchased it. And by, you know, I don't know, what, what year was that? Let me see. Two phased sweet peach launch. Let me see. 2018. I felt like it was earlier than that. Oh no, 2016. Okay, hold on. I got to put palette because there was that second launch. I think that it was, tw yes, 2016. Oh, it says re release on Temptalia. No, that, okay. So 2016 was when they launched the highlighter um, stuff and the powders and all of that. Man, okay. I feel like it was earlier than that. When was that? Let me type in Laura Lee commercial. And you all are probably screaming it at me. December of 2016 was the Laura Lee commercial. I guess that wasn't the palette. What y'all, let me look back, see if y'all are screaming at me what year that was. I guess it's not really that important, but um, but yeah, it's at least 2016. Was this the was this the palette though? Let me see if I can, you know what? Let me share my screen and let's see if we can watch it. Do you think they're going to ding me for, um, are they going to ding me for uh, copyright if I play this video? I don't care. It'll be fine. Let me see if I can get it to play. Okay, it is playing good. Okay. Let me see. Present. Share screen. Here we go. Let's play it. Share. Okay. And you can see it. Yay, let's watch it. This is so cute. Too Faced Cosmetics has announced the possible return of the Sweet Peach Eyeshadow Palette. Do you really think we can pull this off? We always do. Making Sweet Peach as fast as we can. Now let's get a palette in everyone's hands. <laughs> is it Laura Q? Oh, you're really a fairy? <laughs> It's a peach miracle. Isn't that so cute? Oh my gosh. I feel like that was that was just the teaser for it. That was. It was just the teaser for it. But um there was a there was a longer version of it that I don't I don't know if it's available anymore. But wasn't Laura so cute in that video? Oh my gosh. So so yeah, so that was kind of the hype around this. People lost their dang minds over it. All right. Um, I do want to move on because I have some funny stories. I want to tell you a funny story about this palette. Uh, I know I, I was, I was meaning to go here. Uh, Genevieve says 2016 was eight years ago. Time freaking flies. I know, right? Like seriously. Okay. So this, this is the TARDIS Pro Remix palette. And this is what happened with the TARDIS Pro Remix palette. And I don't know if you remember this, but Tarte was getting a bunch of shit, right, for only coming out with the same palette over and over and over again. Like, people were like, can we please get some freaking color, man? Like, it's just every palette, the most color we would get would be like a muted purple or something. And people were like, come on, give us color. Give us color. This was the answer to that. This was Tarte's 
answer to give us color. And it, I think, I'm pretty sure it flopped. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it flopped. The, the, okay, so the thing about this is there's two mattes in here. There is kind of a medium toned brown, and then there's a very pale champagne matte. The rest are shimmers or foiled, okay? And the color story on this was so weird. And people were like, what is that? Like, what, what even happened there? So this, I believe, was Tarte's excuse to never make a colorful palette ever again, because I don't think they ever did. The, the outside packaging was really cool, though. It had the reticular design on it. Let me just see if I can get it to, there it is, to reticulate for you. Basically, if you're listening to this, uh, it says Tardis Pro Remix on it, and then there's a bunch of paint splatters, and when you turn it up and down, the paint splatters either appear or disappear. So, um, so yeah, I mean, this, I think really, <laughs> you know, it, it was one of those things where it's like, oh, baby, you tried, baby, you tried, you are not good at this. Therefore we reject you. Go back to making your neutral palettes. We'll leave you alone. <laughs> we'll leave you alone. It's fine. Um, oh, really quickly. There was somebody that joined as a member and I never scrolled down to tell them thank you for the membership. I feel like it started with an A. It disappeared and I got distracted and I'm so sorry I did not say thank you for your membership. And Jennifer just reminded me, thank you for becoming a member of the Collective Brain Elite. I appreciate you so, so much. Just a $1.99 membership. Um, we, you get no perks. It's just basically a tip jar donation. Uh, sometimes we'll do uh, private live streams every once in a while. You do have access to those if you become a member. You have access to our past private live streams that we've done as a community, but there really isn't a whole lot. I'm being honest. You're not, there's not a whole lot you get for your $1.99. Um, if I see it, I will shout you out. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's mostly like a tip, like a thank you kind of situation. So I don't like to commit to something, to telling you I'm going to do something. So that's why I say there's no perks, because that way, if it happens to be no perks, then that's fine. But I have, if I am able to give you something, then I do. I don't like to tell you I'm going to do something and then not do it. So that's why that is the way it is. But anyway, thank you, Jennifer. And thank you to the person earlier. I appreciate you so, so much. There are people that are still members that have been members since the very beginning. And I just thank you so, so, so much. Uh, so yeah, so this was Tarte's attempt at a colorful palette and it went very, very badly. And then they just ignored us and our requests after that because... They're clearly not good at colorful palettes. It's kind of like when Benefit decided they were going to try eyeshadow palettes. I don't have any of the Benefit like eyeshadow things that they tried to do. It was a disaster. They did a terrible job and they never brought eyeshadow back. <laughs> They're like, okay, we're not good at this. We tried. We dipped our toe in the water too cold. We're leaving. We're done. We're not doing that anymore. We're going to focus on eyebrows. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, Kirsten's been a member for eight months. Thank you so much. I remember that palette. I almost bought it, but ew, yeah, it's, it was, the quality was actually not terrible. It was actually fine. It's just the color story was not, not cool. Yes, the Tarte, thank you, Mons, for bringing this up. The Tarte uh, April Fool's blue palette, and then they brought out a version of it. They did try that, and I think people bought that. If I remember right, people bought that Tarte April Fool's blue joke. They were joking about, um, they put up a April Fool's joke. What was it called? I can't remember, but it was basically a joke about that they were going to put out another colorful palette. I feel like it was after. My timeline's a little messed up, but uh, but yeah, but then they ended up releasing. It's like the ice, Icy Betch is what it was called. Icy Betch. So, and they released it, and I think it did okay. Stereotype P123 says they were still trying to offload that Tarte palette and Ipsy sales up until like a year ago. Oh my gosh, really? That's so funny. Oh, A. A is the one that joined earlier. I, I've been, it's me. I've been a member on and off for years. Thank you so much. And you know, anytime you want to be a member, I appreciate you. If you have to un undo it, like I totally get it. It's totally fine. I totally get it. Thank you so much for rejoining. I appreciate you. Um, okay. So I wanted to tell you what's another one. Okay. While we're talking Too Faced, before we move on from Too Faced, I wanted to show you one more. This is the Power of Makeup Palette by Nikki Tutorials. Okay. People were so excited about this. So excited about this palette. It, Nikki was huge, huge. She still is. She still is very big in the space. But the way she, Nikki is a great saleswoman, absolutely great saleswoman. And she sold the crap out of this palette. Like it, this was palette was going to change your life. Like Nikki worked her magic. People got this in their hands 
and they hated it. They absolutely hated it. And it turns out, um, and please correct me if I'm wrong on the story, but Nikki didn't get paid hardly at all for this compared to what they sold. The millions and millions of dollars that they sold, Nikki didn't make as much as she probably should have considering uh, what the, the contract that she signed, that she didn't realize how bad the contract was, which, you know, you, you need to look through your contract and make sure that you believe that it's fair. But I don't believe she got commission from this. I think it was just a flat fee, if I remember right. And it led to kind of the downfall of the relationship between Nikki Tutorials and Too Faced. Now, I did do a full review of this palette, and I actually liked it. Uh, I don't know why I liked it and no one else did, but I actually enjoyed this palette. So I don't know. I don't know. You can see how much I reached for it, though, after this. It couldn't have been that good. Some of the shades literally look barely used. I can barely, like, I can see a little bit of a dent in the matte shades and maybe a little bit of a dent in the sugar-coated shade. But other than that, I mean, they're pretty, oh, and a little bit in this irresistible shade. I can see a little bit of a dent in it. But a lot of these are pretty much brand new. So... So yeah, I mean, this was a big stink back then because Nikki was so popular and their relationship went south so fast. So, so fast. Yeah, Afra says, not only did they make her look like a fool because they gave her a better quality palette to demonstrate and didn't pay her well. Yes, exactly, exactly. Thank you for that. Uh, Veronica says, I was going to purchase, but formula reviews were horrible. Yeah, and I had a good experience with it. I'd be curious, I should use this, you know, because it's really old, but I, powder products, especially since I barely used it, I would feel okay using this for me personally. Um, I should try it and see whether I still think that it's good quality. Pamela says, drama. I, it wasn't the same formula as what they gave her. She she only made $50,000. I thought it was $500,000. $50,000 per the drama channels. Yes, thank you so much. Yes, you guys are saying it right. $50,000, which is a lot of money. Don't get me wrong, $50,000 is more than a lot of people make in an entire year Nikki made off this palette. But considering the millions and millions and millions of dollars, it should have been worked in a commission too, along with the flat fee. And it just, it, it just wasn't there. And I believe, again, please correct me if I'm wrong, Nikki said that she felt taken advantage of, but I could be wrong there. Um, but that was kind of the general vibe from the community is that Too Faced took advantage of Nikki not knowing any better. Uh, so, so yeah, that they, they gave her a palette that was better quality, supposedly, allegedly, and then mailed out something different. But I don't understand. See, this is what I don't understand. Why would you go through the trouble of making a better quality? Maybe. Okay. So maybe this is what happened. This is my conspiracy theory. And this is totally just out of my brain that I just thought of now. Maybe what happened was, is they made the whole palette and they realized that the cost was too much for the, for the palette for mass production based on how many they were going to make. Maybe they had decided originally we're going to make X number of pallets. And then they realized that it wasn't going to be enough. Then they thought about, okay, this formula is going to be too expensive. We're not going to make as much profit. Like we need to make more profit off of this. Let's change the formula so that it's less expensive. And then they gave Nikki the samples from the first run of it that were the drafts basically. That's what I, that's my conspiracy theory that I just made up out of my head. It is not based in any kind of reality. It's just based on what I've seen, like as far as manufacturing since this came out, that that could be a possibility of what happened and how they had two formulas. Um, but again, I just made that up. So, I mean, it's possible that it's true, but who knows? <laughs> So yes, yeah, so that was a story. That was something that happened. Let me see what else I have over here. Um, I also brought out the Just Peachy Mattes palette that Too Faced launched later. I don't feel like this had the same hype as the original palette, but I remember really enjoying this one as well. All right, we are at the halfway mark. So I want to take just a quick second to show you what's on my face because I'm very excited about the palette that I just got in the mail. I did purchase it. This is from Vampire Cosmetics. Look at this, my friends. If you were a child in the 80s, you will immediately recognize this. If you were not a child in the 80s, you probably heard of this. This is a palette dedicated to the freaking Oregon Trail. When I saw this, I was doing research for What's in Makeup, and I saw 
their website. They were releasing something else and I was like, oh my gosh, I need to have this in my life. So I'm gonna hold it up real close so that you can see kind of what we're dealing with here. So it says the Oregon Trail at the top and the bottom, uh, the name of it says you have made it to Oregon palette, which nobody ever freaking made it to Oregon. If you made it to Oregon, I'm so proud of you. I think I remember one of my classmates made it to Oregon, but I never made it to Oregon. I always died, like always forever died. But I think it was the chasing of the dream of making it to Oregon that made us keep trying. So it says vegan, talc-free, cruelty-free on the side. There's a little QR code on the side. And then on the back of the packaging, it just gives a little bit of um, a little summary of Oregon Trail and then a little bit, um, a little summary of Vampire Cosmetics. So let me go ahead and open it and show you the palette. And they don't know who I am. This is not sponsored. I purchased this. This is just me being interested in something I want to show you. So this is the palette itself on the outside. And it looks like a little computer. And these, this looks exactly like the computers we used in school to play Oregon Trail. Exactly the same. Here is the back of it. So uh, let me da, da 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 It says on the front, congratulations, you've made it to Oregon. Let's see how many points you have received. And it says, William at Val... What, Williamette Valley, September 9th, 1848, press space bar to continue. And then you open it up and that the plastic falls out, which shouldn't be. This is the inside. So the inside of it isn't, you know, super exciting to me. Uh, I did use on my eyes today, the gray shade on my outer corner a little bit. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's just, you know, it's colors that go with it, I guess. I mean, it was in, it was green. Like all the text was green like that I remember. I don't remember it being in color at all. It was just green. But maybe later versions of it had color. So I guess that's where they get the colors from. Uh, but yeah. Okay, so, okay. So Martha, this is a game reference. Sorry, I'm 71, don't remember this. Okay, so in the 80s was when we first started getting computers in the classrooms. And this was a game that they had us play to learn about the Oregon Trail. It was basically a history game. And what you would do is you would go down a path and you would uh, make choices and things like that. And then most of the time you would die. And the big joke was dying of dysentery. Like you would, you would just die like randomly. And the goal was to make it to Oregon. So it was supposed to simulate what it was like, how hard it was to walk the Oregon Trail. So that's why it was academic. So we had this in our classrooms to play. And people, like us kids, we lost our minds because we had never played video games like this before. Like it was brand new. And we were so excited. Like the computer day when we got to play Oregon Trail was such a big deal. It was a huge deal. So, you know, a lot of people who had this in their classrooms just have a lot of positive memories with this. I mean, the floppy disks that were like big, huge squares and they were literally floppy and you go like that. Yeah, it go like that. Meaning I'm, I'm sitting here, if you're listening, I'm shaking my hand, shake like shaking the floppy disk. Uh, it just brings back Good childhood memories, Martha. And I think that, you know, I'm sure that there's something you did in school. Like everybody, there's things that we did in school that bring back positive memories. I'd be curious to know what yours is. Uh, like what, Martha, you remember from school that would be really cool to make a makeup product from. I would love to hear that from you. I don't know if I'll find your comment again, but I would love to know, Martha, if you can think of something, what would be cool from your childhood to make an eyeshadow palette? I would love to know. Okay, so yes, damn that broken wheel. Exactly, exactly. So, so yeah, so that's what's on my eyes today. Um, other things, just to quickly mention, uh, lipstick today. I'm wearing this lip gloss that was sent to me in PR from Kaleidos. This is called Last Smoke. And I topped it, it wasn't opaque enough, so I topped it a little bit with this Viseart palette. This I got in my, I paid for it. It's in my, from my Beautylish Lucky Bag. I used a little bit of one of the light purple eyeshadows. It's like a light matte purple eyeshadow and just kind of topped the lip gloss with a little bit just to give it a little more opacity. So that is, um, oh, and then for blush, this was set in PR. This is from the ColourPop Valentine's Day collection. This is the I Adore, Adore You Lip and Cheek Balm. Uh, and it's a little heart shape and it's kind of a medium, very bright pink. That's my blush today. All right. Yes, Russian says, oh man, I kind of hate the shades. I kind of hate the shades too, but I feel like that's not what I bought it for. I bought it for the nostalgia and just to kind of look at it. And I think that it's just so fun. So I didn't really care that I hated the shades, to be honest, <laughs> because it brings me joy. You know, it's one of the things that brings me joy. And the silver really did perform very well on the outer corner. It did a good job. I used the the Viseart palette for the rest of the look. And the Viseart palette is what I used in What's Up and Makeup today as well. 
Will Willamette. Thank you, Gabrielle. I appreciate you correcting me. Thank you so much. So uh, let's go into another story. So many stories. I have a cold. Hopefully that came out okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Let's talk about this. So we were talking about Laura earlier. So let's talk about Laura again. The Laura Lee Los Angeles cat's pajamas palette. Poor Laura. <laughs> Poor Laura. Oh my gosh. Okay. So Laura launched Laura Lee Los Angeles and Laura, like Nikki, extremely, extremely popular. People ripped her to shreds for this palette because it's really freaking weird. Like I get where she was going with it, but it's got like this really glam. If you've never seen this before, wait till you see the inside. The outside is sparkly. It says Laura Lee in the middle. It's got this peach toned makeup lips, almost looks like lipstick drawn blob with Laura Lee Los Angeles in the corner. It says cat's pajamas, black lettering and beautiful on the back. It's just this glittery silver and then you open it. And it's just, it's this reprint of the same like peachy pink flowers over and over again. And the color story didn't match the inside colors. So the colors are like these warm toned browns, a mix of uh, foils and mattes. And then there's all of these like rosy tones on the bottom, uh, like warm tone, rosy tones on the bottom. And then there's a black in the corner. So you've got this like really glamorous glitzy outside and then the inside is just the same flower copy and pasted over and over again. People also complained about the obstructed mirror. So they have the flower print, but the flower print, uh, it, it covers ha like a, at least a third of the mirror. So you just have, you know, a little bit of mirror peeking through. Now I did a review of this because I was deep in my makeup reviews at the time. And I really like the formula. I can't remember if I purchased this or if I got it in PR. I want to say I got it in PR because at that point I had met Laura. We had uh, a couple of really positive interactions and I'm pretty sure I was on PR for this. Uh, and I really, really liked the formula, but people could not get past the packaging and how much they hated the packaging. Uh, I would love to know your memories of this palette though. Let me see. Let me scroll down quite a bit. Uh, Tish says, I remember that Laura palette. It was pretty bleh. Yeah. Uh, Slick says, I like the inside, not the color story. Julie says, I think that's a pretty palette. Oh my God. The things that caused drama back in the day. So much drama. Y'all, people just, they got real, real passionate. It's interesting what people get passionate about on the internet. It really is. The things that people make a huge deal over, what they did not know, is that things were going to take a very serious turn eventually. Uh, so, you know, this this was, yeah, exactly, Rebel. I think that Rebel, uh, Rebel says the flowers are distracting. And I think people were just like, what is going on? Uh, Violet says, I don't see anything wrong with it. You know, and this is the thing is that I think that it, she just went a little too far with it for the taste of people back then. I think, let me see when this launched. Again, uh, Laura Lee Cat's Pajamas. Okay, so that launched. It says six years ago on Reddit. Let me see. I'm trying to find a date. Let me see. I'll click on the Reddit post. I see. Okay. Just says six years ago. It doesn't have a date. Darn. Okay. I don't know how to use Reddit apparently. Se 2017. It looks like October of 2017 is when this launched. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, I think that, that the other thing I think people, people were, people, the outside was just so glamorous. And then the shade names were not glamorous. So there's Redonculus, Oddball, Cray Cray, which people were, I don't know if people made a big deal over Cray Cray at the time, um, but I would imagine later on people might have. Bomb, Diggity, Scatterbrain, Okie Dokie, Quirky Kooky, In One Ear, and Out the Other are the names of the shades. And people, I think it was the glamorous outside with the not glamorous on the inside. But I kind of feel like that's Laura just in general, is that she presents herself in, in on Instagram as this like gorgeous, glamorous, like her, like Laura is one of the most photogenic people. Uh, she's freaking gorgeous in pictures. Um, and then on the inside of Laura is just quirky, quirky and odd and silly. So I think this does represent her very well, but I think at the time people just didn't get it. 
So, uh, so yeah, that was kind of what I saw in the space. Yeah, Mary says if you want oh, if you want to find the date, look for blogger and review videos. Yes, that's where I ended up finding it. So since we're talking about Laura, let's talk about Manny. Where's my Manny palette? I had it. Oh, it's right here. Let's talk about Life's a Drag for a minute. Look how giant this palette is. This was the very first launch from Lunar Beauty. And that's Manny's eyes. And I did purchase this. I was never on Manny's PR. I was always on Laura's PR, never on Manny's. So I, par I everything I got from Lunar Beauty, I purchased. Life's a Drag. Okay, this is the inside of it. And... I'm trying to remember, I think that, you know what, this is the thing is I feel like no matter what either of them launched at the time, people were going to have critiques and criticisms of it just because of who they are. Um, this, I think the biggest complaint, if I remember right, is that it's gigantic. It's literally bigger than my head and harder to store. Uh, and I, I like the formula, Manny's formula too. I really enjoyed it. I did a full review of this. Excuse me. But of course, I didn't really play in the bright shades very much because it's just not my jam. But I really enjoyed the more natural shades that he put out. Manny actually put out a really good formula. I know people are not happy with them for supporting James Charles. So that's a thing um, to keep in mind when we're discussing them. But we're talking about them in the past. So uh, this was before either one of them were really in drama. I feel like Drama Again in 1 was, what, 2018, something like that. So this was before that. Uh, overall, just a really nice palette. I don't feel like there was as much drama with Manny's palette as there was with Laura's first launch. Yeah, he did remaster it, and I think that he made it smaller, right, Samantha? Samantha says, I have Life's a Drag remastered. I have, I did not get that. I just have this one. I feel like it's a lot smaller. Like, the pans were a lot smaller. So if you were listening, I didn't describe it for you. So over on the uh, left-hand side of the palette is a lot of neutral mattes with a couple of, um, not neutral, natural mattes with a couple of natural shimmers in the middle. And then on the right-hand side is all very bright pops of color. So we have a bright yellow, a purple, a teal teal, a pink, a blue, and then like a deep burgundy, like a burgundy red. So yeah, I don't feel like there was much drama surrounding that, but I figured I would mention it since I have it. Uh, another one that I want to mention, since we're talking about influencers, this was so loved and I don't feel like this got as much hype as it probably, um, Yes, exactly. Citrine, Manny, and Laura both support James Charles unless you guys cover that. I just, I j literally just mentioned it. It's just something to, to mention every time, you know, if we mention Laura and Manny, we should probably mention that just in case. So people can make a decision whether they want, you know, these are old palettes, they're discontinued, but in case people, you know, want to know that. Okay, so So Jaded by Kathleen Lights. This, I freaking loved this palette. I don't, I don't know how someone, a person, I guess it's the same way a business does, designs that many colors inside of a palette. I feel like Kathleen Lights fans really jumped on this and sold it out quickly. And then, um, and then it just kind of like fizzled out. I felt like this should have been re-released because I, I feel like when people got this in their hands, they really, really loved it. I know I really loved this. Uh, I popped around so much in this palette that it doesn't look like a lot of the shades are super used because I was just using all of them just a little bit. And really, really love this. It has a very nice mix of mattes and shimmers and foiled and these glittery shades. Um, there's a couple of straight glitters in here. Just a really fun, fun palette. And I love the design on it because, you know, Kathleen is very much into the, um, you know, like um, metaphysical stuff. So like, um, I think it's considered metaphysical, like crystal healing and stuff like that and horoscopes. And uh, so it's all about uh, gemstones. And that's the, um, that's the theme of this. And I remember really, really loving this and people kind of losing their minds over that. So... Yeah, Sarah says, still love the So Jaded. I need to pull it out more because it is such a great palette. It's such a great palette design. She did such a wonderful job picking colors. It's interesting when you have somebody that's really good at makeup picking colors. Te it tends to bring the color story to a different level, which I absolutely love. Yeah, Donna Lee's talking about Laura and Manny. Um, she says, also, they're reverting to their true selves that got them canceled. I mean pretty much is what it seems like. You know, when you're when you're honest about who you are, not everybody's going to like that. You know? And it's true. It's true. 
Uh, she all, they also, uh, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know your pronouns. Um, Manny's, Manny doesn't cater to POC and didn't like me bringing it up in one of his lunches. Actually, I think you use she, her. I think when I watched your video, you said you use she, her. Um, Manny doesn't cater to POC. I didn't like me and didn't like me bringing it up in one of his launchers. Oh no. Well, you, that's, that's a misstep. That's a misstep. You need to listen to that. That's important. Uh, okay. So another one I wanted to bring up moving away from influencer launches because we only have 15 minutes left. Can you believe how fast this is going? Let us talk about subculture for a minute. Okay. ABH subculture. Okay. This is what happened. This is the timeline. So we talked about this recently, but I want to bring this up because this is, this is iconic. So modern Renaissance came out and we were just talking about how some people, this was their very, very first high end eyeshadow palette. People lost their minds over modern Renaissance. This brought makeup application to the next level. People were using the Too Faced palettes, the Urban Decay palettes. And when ABH launched this, this I believe was the first palette of a new generation of eyeshadow formulas where it was really pigmented, really easy to work with. Um, you had a nice mix of mattes and sh shimmer shades and uh, not shimmer shades, but foiled shades. Uh, it's just blew people's minds, the quality of this because it was different and it was great. So when they released subculture, people were like, okay, this is a more natural palette, warm tone, natural palette. Subculture was like, no one had ever seen anything like this color story before. Like what is even happening? Like, what are they thinking? What is even happening? This is so interesting and different. And people were very excited about it. These were both purchased by the way, but people got it in their hands. And what they didn't realize was that they changed the formula. The formula was different. They made it more pigment in there, which made it more difficult to blend. The color story also muddied on people because you have complementary colors in here. If you're going to use the red and the green together, it's going to turn into mud because that's just what happens when you mix complementary colors. And I don't, I think that the people creating this were, were most likely very good at makeup and not really thinking about the average user as far as the color story. But even the very talented people, I remember Alyssa Ashley did a review of this, even the very talented people had trouble working with it. And I think that's where people really became shocked and like, what is happening? Because you'd see people that were extremely talented trying to use it and not being able to use it. So what, what they did was after the initial palette sold out, or I don't know if they sold out or not, I shouldn't say that because I don't know, but after a little while, once they got the feedback, they actually reformulated these and they made them closer to the modern Renaissance formula. So it was the same shades, but in the older formula. And then people responded much more positively to this palette. This is from the original launch. This is the original formula. I did not repurchase it when they reformulated. If you look on YouTube, if you're curious, there are comparisons of the old formula to the newer formula. But this was a big stink, man. This was a big stink. People were like, what is going on? And I think it was the emotion of just being really disappointed because people had had the, the modern Renaissance palette and they were so excited about it. And then to have subculture come out and be like, oh, um, Donnelly, I don't know. I, I would just, I think that because this is, okay, that, let me just tell you my logic for being confused about Donnelly's pronouns. It's because Audra is non-binary. And when I see Donnelly, I think of Audra in that picture because Donnelly's makeup looks like Audra's makeup. Like this just looks like Donnelly's picture here just looks like a picture Audra would take. So thank you so much. I'm she, her, not fully informed and well-versed of other pronouns. See, I'm so sorry, Donnelly, because I think I, I just got, because Audra is non-binary and you, your, your look here, not, you don't look like Audra, but your look here looks like something Audra would wear. So I just got a little, little flipped around and I have a non-binary kid and it's just, so I apologize. <laughs> I didn't mean to confuse people. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to confuse people. Um, yes, I, I didn't mean to confuse people. I'm so sorry. I think I just got a little off because Donnelly's picture just reminds me of my friend. <laughs> So let's pretend I didn't do that. Let's just rewind a little bit. So, um, but yes. Hey, that's me. Yeah, see Audra. See, look at Audra's, look at Audra's picture. See, Audra has like the color, Audra wears bright, colorful makeup. Audra has color, you know, bright colored hair. And just, it just threw me off for a second because I'm so ingrained in Audra's pronouns. <laughs> All right, let's forget it now. Okay, let's move on. So um, this was a good choice, KTB. The only ABH palette I have is the Jackie one. That was a fantastic palette. 
that was really good. The Jackie palette, the um, the pink one. Who was the pink one? Hold on, I have them. Let me see. Are they in here? Hold on. Hold on. Hold please. I don't know where I put them. Carly Bible. They're in one of my piles somewhere. Here it is. This one. I am Reezy, not Carly Bible. Amreezy was what I was thinking of. I think Carly did one too, but this, the Amreezy palette, this palette was so good. And of course the Jackie palette was so good. Look, the brush is even still in there. I never even took the brush out, but this palette was so good. So I think subculture was just like a misstep. Um, it was just one of those things where, um, you know, they tried something, didn't work. It was kind of like the Tarte palette. They tried something, it didn't work. They rewound, they fixed it. And then everything was fine again. All was well and good in the world. All was well and good in the world. Hi, Audra. I'm happy you're here. Okay, so I also wanted to mention, um, not a lot of drama surrounding this one. I just kind of wanted to show you the Graveyard Girl Swamp Queen palette because of this. people made a huge deal over this one too. Uh, this one smells like vanilla. It smells really, really good. It still smells really good. And this was when Graveyard Girl was at her peak. And... This palette was really fun. I did do a full review of this one at the time. I remember the shade Sippy Sippy with the glitter. The glitter, the fallout was awful. It was terrible. But overall, the palette was pretty good. It was pretty good. Um, and the smell, it smells still really strong of vanilla. Oh, interesting. So Dara says, I worked in a place where they then was used for everyone just to make it easier than guessing or offending. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that might be where we're going with that. No, Donnelly says I decluttered the Jackie palette. It got hard pan on me. No, you didn't use a piece of tape and tape it and get the hard pan. That's such a good palette. Oh no. Some people just don't want to mess with it though. Um, but I, I do miss Bunny. I feel like she like, she was like at a peak and then she just kind of disappeared. The internet is hard, man, especially when you have that big of a following. My husband was asking me the other day, he was like, you know, if you could tomorrow just wake up and have millions of followers, would you want that? I said, absolutely not. <laughs> because it just gets to a whole nother level. And I don't think emotionally I could handle that because, you know, people, people, when you get to that point, just get, I mean, people are already mean, but when there's thousands of them being mean, it's different than having 10 of them being mean, you know, like right now I have, you know, a you know, handful of comments every once in a while that are really cruel. Uh, but, over, but it's really not, it's not overwhelming. You know, it's like few a month maybe that I get or that are just like mean comments, like people just being mean to be mean, but it doesn't really happen all that often. And I think eventually it would really get to me. Like, I don't know how some of these people deal with it, like celebrities and stuff deal with just how nasty people are. I think people forget that um, people that are in the public eye are actually people that have emotions and feelings and expect them to just deal with it. Like it's their fault for being in the public eye and they chose that. So therefore, you know, it's free game to, you know, throw tomatoes at them. And I think that that's so messed up. So messed up. It's different if somebody actually does something and, you know, you want to give constructive you know, or you want to express your feelings or you want to give constructive feedback or something like that. Like that's one thing, but to like be cruel is a whole nother thing. It's a whole nother thing. Uh, so that's why I don't think I could, I don't know if that's why Bunny stopped making videos was because of that. But, you know, I don't think I could have handled the amount of attention that she had, uh, that she had on her, on her content. Oh, interesting. So a teacup says bunny still posts. She just cut her own hair. It looks so cute. Really? I'll have to go check that out. That's so cool. Yeah. I think that was a criticism. I squish yarn. I love your name. Uh, that the color story did not scream bunny. I, because remember tart was in their natural palette phase. So I think that, um, you know, people were really, you know, people wanted the natural palettes and I think they went the safe route with it. It doesn't scream bunny, does it? Like not at all now in hindsight. I don't think people criticized it for that though back then, at least that I saw. Um, oh, thank you, Stereotype. -y. Uh, dark Angel, uh, they're t telling Dark Angel, I love Jen's review of the prison palette. Thank you so much. I haven't seen that review in forever. I don't even remember what I said, but I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> I remember, you know what? I remember the prison being, palette being similar to subculture and how it was. I think they released very close to each other. 
now that you mention it. And it was after that that they switched it back. Because because this came out, I believe, in the fall, and then Prism came out for a holiday, I believe. Something like that. All right. Yes, Tish says, wait, Tarte has a non-natural palette phase? Okay, so what I was meaning, <laughs> you're right. See, I didn't say that correctly. Thank you, Tish. When Before they tried to go colorful, before they tried, before they attempted to go colorful, you're absolutely right. You're right. <laughs> See, that's why you need to move here, Tish. And we need to film live chat together. So there you go. <laughs> I got to meet Tish at the farmer, the last farmer's market that I had for um, for my marshmallow company. And we got to talk for an hour. What was it, like an hour and a half, two hours, something like that. It was lovely. So, all right. Uh, Sultry was lit. Sultry was my favorite of all time, Catherine. Sultry was amazing. Okay, so I wanted to show you Dominique Cosmetics, the latte palette. This was Dominique Cosmetics' original palette, and I really love this. It got rave reviews. Uh, people seem to really enjoy it, but I feel like Dominique Cosmetics never took off the way that I thought that it would. Kristen Dominique um, is the owner of this, and I thought that this would have like it would have been more prominent everywhere. I don't know if it's because she didn't send out enough PR that people weren't talking about it. Because the thing about PR, it's like, you know, yes, people can afford to buy it. But if it's if they already have stuff that they want to review, this is something that I try to explain to people that don't do this for a job because it's really hard to explain because from, an, from somebody that doesn't get PR, you know, it's like you look at something like this. I'm having an avalanche over here. You look at something like this and it's like, oh, you know, if you want to review it, why don't you just buy it? And it's like, yeah, I could definitely buy it. But if you're if you're sitting on palettes that you know are of high interest and you want to review those, there's only so many hours in the day to do that. So you're going to review what's in front of you if you feel like it's high interest rather than going out and buying something even though you absolutely can. So I think that might be, I, I don't know like what happened with that. And then there was the lemonade palette debacle. Oh my gosh. It's right here. Hold on. I have it. Where is it? Might as well get this out while I'm here. All of the stories. Where is it? I know I saw it before I started filming. I know it's in here. Oh my gosh, for reals? Is it this one? No, that's Lunar Beauty. Erg. Where did it go? I'll find it as soon as I'm done filming. I can't find it. Um, I know that it's in there though. Okay, so Lunar, so Lunar Beauty. So Dominic Cosmetics came out with the Lemonade palette. I think it was next and people didn't see that as being as high quality. So I think that people kind of lost some faith inside um, in, in Dominique Cosmetics. Okay, SJ makes a really great point. Why do all these palettes inside look the same to me? Because they are. <laughs> they're all the same. They're all, because they're all the same. People were collecting eyeshadow palettes and it was one of those things where it was like, oh, I don't have one from that brand. I want to try that formula or I don't, you know, I want to support this influencer and I want a piece of them in my home or it was, yeah. It's funny in hindsight, but at the time, I don't think we really like went there because there wasn't a lot of colorful palettes like that. The indie brands hadn't really pushed through at that point. I mean, there were people that were focused on some indie brands, but it wasn't as easy to, like people didn't know that that was an option as much back then. I don't feel like, because the indie brands are the ones that really broke through with those colorful palettes, the duochromes, the multi-chromes, all of that. Um, so I think that's why they all look the same is because they were. And I think that's why a lot of people got burned out on eyeshadow palettes is because they ended up like this with all these natural palettes. And then they're like, why the frick do I have all these? <laughs> they're the same damn color over and over again. Like, why am I doing this? And the, and the bubble burst. I really do. And this bubble wasn't completely burst. I think 2020 and the pandemic really burst it. I was the end of that. I was the end of that. I also wanted to show you, since we were talking about Laura Lee earlier with the Nudie Patootie palette, yeah, no, I want to show you the nudie patootie palette with the cat's pajamas palette. This was Laura's answer to the criticism from cat's pajamas. So this is nudie patootie, and it's a lot of like peachy tones and browns. I mean, it's again, it's going to look kind of the same, right? Um, it's got a little bit of white and silver in there and a little grayish kind of color, but for the most part, it's 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 just a natural palette. But you can see it's a little more cohesive in design than it was with the cat's pajamas, where cat's pajamas was kind of all over the place. But the thing is, Laura's kind of all over the place. So it made sense for her to me. It made total sense. 
Oh, Jennifer, I'm so glad you're enjoying the chat. That makes me so happy. Yay. Um, okay, so does anyone remember the Katie and Desi Dose of Colors palette? I don't have that, but I have the I Love Sarah E palette. One of my subscribers actually bought this for me. I got it uh, on one of my road trips. She passed this off to me. It was so nice of her. I do have the this one, but I don't have the dose of the dose of colors, um, Desi and Katie one. But this one was really pretty. This is when we were starting to break into more colors, more bright and bold colors. I think people were just kind of scared to wear bright and bold colors, and you know. I think still now, uh, more natural colors are in general, in the general population, more popular than the bright and bold colors. Oh no. <laughs> Donnelly says it's hiding because it's embarrassed of its color story too. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's like, don't, don't, don't take me out. It was actually, it was actually kind of bright. Um, I had brought out the Kat Von, the Kat Von D Beauty because it was Kat Von D Beauty Pastel Goth Palette. I had brought this one out. People, the issue with this one that people had is people said it wasn't pastel, which was when I, I actually learned the true meaning of pastel was through this palette. <laughs> That apparently these are not pastel colors, which I thought that they were. Apparently, Kat Von D Beauty thought that they were. And people were like, it's not pastel. I don't even know what the true meaning of pastel is now, to be completely honest. But um, but that was the thing as well. I brought that one out. Let me see if there was anything else. Um, Black Magic Carnival by Alma Beauty. I wanted to show that to you because this, I felt like, was what a lot of people were screaming for. Um, I believe this came out a little bit later, though. Just a lot of really beautiful colors. This is a fantastic palette. R.I.P. I'm a beauty. Like, ugh, makes me so sad. Um, I was going to talk about Z palette, too, but we're out of time, and that's a long story, so we'll have to save that for another day. Uh, but thank you all so much for being here in live chat. I appreciate you all so much. Uh, y'all are awesome. This week, okay, let me tell you what happened. So last week I told you at this time I was going to put out the behind the controversy for Lisa Frank uh, and the Kickstarter thing. What I did not know was the information that I did not know. Uh, there is so much more to that Lisa Frank Kickstarter fail story that that I'm uncovering all of these layers and it I realized that um, I was it wasn't going to be ready so I had to switch gears and I ended up putting up a video concept that I had had in the works and that's what ended up going up on Friday was uh, how to improve your skincare routine without spending any money and, and that video is, is it's it came out great but I'm really excited to get you the Lisa Frank video. If you don't know that situation, just very quick summary. Lisa Frank collabed, uh, Lisa Frank the sticker, you know, all of the neon trapper keeper lady. So she collabed with a indie brand called Glamour Dolls. They started a Kickstarter. A bunch of people donated. Hundreds of thousands of dollars were donated. And very, very, very little product went out. And people did not get refunds unless you asked for a refund early enough. Uh, but I'm going to tell you the story about why people weren't asking for refunds and what the involvement of the community is. It's going to be from the perspective of being a backer, being somebody who donated to this. What was happening behind the scenes that made us all keep going with it? Why did we not ask for a refund? Why did we, um, you know, keep believing this was going to happen even over a year after we didn't have product in our hands? Uh, you know, what, what was, what was happening really behind the scenes? And I don't think a lot of people know that story. I didn't even know parts of it. So I'm very excited to share the story with you. I'm hoping that it'll be ready for Friday. I have probably about three quarters of the research done for it. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to get that to you. And then, of course, what's up in makeup this coming weekend uh, on Saturday, um, on Sunday and Monday. So I hope you have a lovely, lovely week. Thank you for being here. Yay, sports. If you end up going to a party or something and you end up drinking some beverages, some alcoholic beverages, please be safe. Um, please don't drink and drive. Uh, and also, if you are not drinking and driving and you are driving, though, please be aware and please be safe on the roads. I know on a day like this, there can be a lot of people being irresponsible. So please Please be safe. Please take care of yourself and mad love to you. And I will see you in a video very, very soon. Bye.